And Kate, if you would watch the timing, please. I sure, I sure will. Thank you. I'm Francis Brown, N5889 State Road 35 on Alaska. And I come here on these referendums to, uh, we got referendum number one and number two. The number one has a four school year to implement the, and so forth. The other one doesn't have any time limit on the number of years. Now, is that for 100 years then, or is it, I, I think they should all have a limit on them. I'd like to see the board put a limit on that one as well as the first one. Is there any, is there any, am I mis misreading this when it says non-recurring basis to provide for the needs for the school vehicles and so forth? Is that, is that forever then? It is, um, Francis, yes, I guess until well, the, um. I can't agree with any referendum forever. I just think in five years, who here knows what the finances will be in five years? So I think that should be pulled out and put a time limit on it. That's what I'm asking for. I have a second thing. I was over at the <coughs> Holman Lutheran Church basement where the DECA Club put on a breakfast for the senior citizens. I want to say a thank you. It was a very nice event. And I got to congratulate that DECA people for their picture in the paper with 44 of them going to the state meet and so forth. I think they've done an excellent job over the years. And when they introduced themselves, it was impressive to hear their plans and things that were going on. And one nice thing about it, one little lady did draw up my name for a door prize. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Francis. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Patrick Barlow, 907 Dana Lane. Um, a familiar face to some of you, probably. Um, I come this evening just to encourage you to put both of the questions on the referendums on the ballot in April. Um, I'm in favor of both of them and um, hate to admit this, but there's a little story I have about the maintenance referendum. Um, if you were to come to my house, I have a lot of cracks in my driveway and unfortunately I'm probably have to replace my driveway pretty soon. If I would have been smarter, and maybe bought 15 to 20 dollars of caulking and put that in now or a couple of years ago I would have been a lot better off but now I'll probably be spending hundreds if not thousands to to redo that driveway and it kind of reminds me of that idea of an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure um, you will have ongoing maintenance needs from what I've heard a dollar <coughs> paid now to maintain your buildings saves us four dollars in the future um, and I think that that's important that we look at both the maintenance of the buildings as well as the bus fleet and I encourage you to put that on the, the, uh, the referendum. For the mobile technology, I think that one is important in terms of helping students learn how to use the technology to help themselves learn. I think we have these ideas of digital natives and the millennial generation where our young people know how to consume media, consume entertainment, I don't think they really have got the best handle on how to use technology to improve their learning. And working at the university like I do, and teaching a few classes and working with uh, individuals there, I do see that there's a growth that they need to have as they enter our institution and leave us to use the technologies we have to improve their learning. So I ask you to include um, that mobile technology, that one-to-one -one, uh, technology item on the referendum. I think the other thing is a more general idea. Um, I just spent some time with your uh, consultants for the superintendent search, and every action this board and this district takes between now until you hire someone successfully, I think will be interpreted as something that you're in support of education in this community, or, or perhaps leaves some issues uh, to question about the support this community has for education. So, so even your vote tonight, just to put these referendum on the ballot, to let the people speak their, their mind on these issues, I think would be taken as a positive sign that this board cares about the learning that takes place and will greatly impact the quality of the applicant pool you're able to draw and the person you're able to actually in the end to hire. So there's a whole other issue beyond these two referendum, what they'll directly do to improve uh, the district. Thank you for your time and for your efforts. 
Thank you, Patrick. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? Don't see anyone else coming forward. So we will move on to recognition and thank you then, Dr. Carlson. Thank you, two recognitions this evening. Uh, a great thank you to Brian and Sarah Clements who have <coughs> graciously donated $1,000, which will benefit to go towards the band uniform drive. And so thanks so much to uh, the Clements for their donation. Also, Holman Area Foundation through a grant request and grant work. Thank you to that group for funding the purchase of an iPad to be used by at-risk students at Viking Elementary. And again, um, great educational opportunity for them. And um, the, we so much appreciate the ongoing partnership and work with the Holman Area Foundation. That's it. Okay, great, thank you. Then District Administrator's Report, Dr. Carlson. Just a couple things to add to the written <coughs> report, if I could, and some of this just came to my attention. Um, I wanted to approach the board. Uh, Senate Bill 1 on uh, school accountability is just uh, pretty fresh out there. And so I wanted to bring to the attention of the board that you have received information on that, I believe even today, through your school board association. I also took the liberty of even uh, forwarding that through an email in addition, so maybe you've gotten it twice. But in addition, I've been contacted um, through by the School District of La Crosse to see if there would be interest to work together, the boards of multiple school districts, in crafting a joint leg uh, letter to the legislature on this issue. And, and this is not an agenda item. Um, but it is somewhat timely if I, if there was some kind of indication which you have done occasionally uh, just to me, but not in action as a board, I could take that and perhaps uh, Mrs. Hancock would be the one. I don't know, I'd have to work with the other superintendents, how comfortable you are of crafting something that then perhaps the board chair would be the name that would be part of that. So uh, this came today, and um, not an action item, but if some kind of direction, or, or we can just simply say um, no to if you're not comfortable. So I think the, what came from um, <clears throat> Dr. Nelson was an interest in showing regional support um, or regional concern over some of the bills that are coming forward. So if I, if there's consensus that we move forward as a board and have a letter on behalf of the board, um, if there's concern about that, then I would recommend that each of you re individually um, may write a letter. But as Dr. Carlson said, it's not an action item this e evening. So I see a couple nods and I see some no reaction. So I'm just Tim? wondering if the, the sense of urgency if we actually could potentially get a resolution and have the board even actually take an action on it to make even a stronger statement. I know we couldn't do that tonight, but that would... I will follow up, certainly, and I can report back. And um, again, I just didn't have time this afternoon to follow up on specifics and really zero down on the time issue. And so I'd be happy to do that and report back. Is that sound appropriate by the rest of the board? I'm seeing more nodding. Mm -hmm. I would note that Senate Bill 1 has a hearing tomorrow. Um, and we just received that from, as Dr. Carlson said, from um, WASB. The benefits of Senate Bill are some things we talked about last week or last meeting when we had um, Senator Schilling here. It includes, it, it addresses local control a little bit better. Um, <coughs> It has a single test component of it and then no letter grades for school districts. So some of those things that we addressed at our meeting um, are part of that. But I think we will try to do, we haven't done that in the past and I, I would like to see us try to do a resolution. Um, but in the time being, if individual board members want to reach out, that would be appropriate as well. But come back um, to our next meeting and do a resolution, so. Okay. Thank you, that's it. Okay, well then moving on to reports and discussion, health insurance options uh, report, Jay Clark. 
In your board packet, you received an updated version of the two-year health insurance direction document, this familiar uh, document because you saw it at the last board meeting. One thing that has changed is the, um, based on the suggestions that the board made at the last meeting that under 2016-17 uh, plan 2B and uh, uh, again under 2015-16 we looked at changing the uh, contribution to be equal to half the deductible rather than expanding the co-insurance portion of it. If you remember that was a comment made. If you increase the deductible but don't allow dollars to flow to that um, so we've made that adjustment. And remember, this is fluid. Uh, we still don't have information on the claims experience, but uh, wanted to uh, provide the board an opportunity for additional feedback uh, as uh, I work with Janice Waver and the Insurance Center on this issue. No specific action required tonight. And this um, information was shared with the Personnel and Governance Committee as well, um, and they were supportive of the direction. So, okay. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Then the April 7th referendum, uh, Dr. Carlson. <clears throat> what you have before you and included in your board packet is an issue paper that talks about the issue of the uh, ultimately leading to a recommendation to advance two resolutions to an April 7th um, uh, election. And so I referenced the issue paper. Also, you have more specifically copies of the resolutions themselves. I've also included, and again, uh, this also went out uh, late last week to you, but we've continually tried to do more of, of expanding even responses to some of the supplemental Q&A that I presented to you at the last board meeting on the 12th. Um, and some of you have asked to expand on some rationale. Also, there is one or two additional questions. I think there's a question about um, uh, cost of a special election versus the regular election. So this has been ongoing, continually trying to um, provide it. it has taken some time to do a thorough job for you and so I'm not going to apologize for the timing but it is what it is but we want to make sure you have that available I, I listed as a supplemental because it hasn't been part of that original Q&A which depending on the board's decision tonight we have to get to that point of finalizing um, how we would move forward those are um, items that you have. Um, I'd be happy to, uh, <coughs> again, just for the viewing audience too, when, we ref when I mentioned issue paper, this is what is included in the board packet, ultimately resulting in this recommendation here of two resolutions. But again, the actual resolutions are in much more greater detail, and we have that available as well. But um, so I don't want to take more. I want to reserve time for more discussion for the board, opportunity for that. This is part of the consent agenda. And um, uh, so how can we uh, um, help at this point? Before you move forward, could you put the questions up again? OK. The second question. Are you looking for the full resolution questions as it would appear on the ballot or? What would appear on the ballot? Okay. But the question is in here, it says resolution to exceed, it says on a non recurring. Are you, I'm sorry, Ms. Hancock, which one are you referencing? Two. The second one? The second one, yes. They both say non recurring. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's working, I see it. While the computer's catching up, um, Mr. Brown actually described it in as simple a terms as anybody could. Um, when you get into um, what has to be stated in the referenda question, 
uh, it's not quite as easy to interpret because as I talk to legal counsel in developing the wording, um, you need to be careful in, so it's $335,000. It's $335,000 each year for all future years until the board rescinds or the need goes away. But it's not an additional $335,000 each year. That is to say 335 plus another 335 in the second year, $670,000 in the second year, and each year building by. That is not the intent. So um, there may be reference to non-recurring within question number two, but that means you're not adding another 335 each year. It's the same 335 in the first year, and then for all subsequent years that amount stays the same. Um, yeah. So another attorney could uh, read that and and, and understand that more clear, clearly, but our attorney says it has to be worded this way to um, whether any challenge uh, that might come forward. Does that make sense? I don't know if I've, I've tried to capture in this whole resolution if those are kind of the, you're, the you're actually referring to, referencing? You're basically asking for uh, an increase in the budget for that much money f to support technology f in, for as long as you think you need it, right? So to exceed revenue limits. I, I'm s boy, Mr. Cruz, I'm sorry. I thought I heard for as long as we need it on the technology. Yes. Oh. No. 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 Not on so the technology. Please, if I say anything tonight, this is crucial that, that I have, I want to make sure that everybody's clear the difference between the two resolutions, and I know we've talked about that, but let's just make sure we're clear. So, Mr. So, Cruz, the technology is for a limited period of time, not for as long as we need it. Okay. Okay. I I, um, I apologize. I can't do a lot of reading right now. I fall asleep pretty easily. <laughs> oh. You know my situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm not been, I haven't I haven't read much. Of this, sure. So I just can't read right now. Much. So, question number one is for four school years. Correct. Exceeding revenue limits by that amount. So again, it's not as Jay said. It's not like we're doing the six hundred and fifty-five, and then adding another six fifty-five. It's just six fifty-five over the revenue limits. So it doesn't duplicate each, or each compound. Year. It's not compounding. I guess is what. And so the second question is the one where you see the non-recurring, <clears throat> but the the um, so I think as Mr. Clark indicated that's kind of confusing because that made it sound like it was limited too and that one as Mr. Clark said is unlimited um, but the board at any time could decide that they didn't need to exceed revenue limits of that amount if say this year we didn't need a bus a new bus or something um, for some reason or maybe the maybe the um, finance, the school finance law changes and you know we're receiving adequate funds so we don't need to exceed our revenue limit, that type of thing. There could be any number of reasons why we may not exceed revenue limits for those amount. But that is going on. It's kind of like a building. You build a building, you need to maintain it. So uh, I would hope we would ha our buildings would last 100 years and we need to provide you know roofs and things like that for those buildings. but. Um, there, there is not a date certain end to that resolution. Thank you. <clears throat> this is why the Q&A and the community education uh, program, if the board approves this tonight, will be so important uh, to make sure there is clarity so that when people do vote on April 7th, if that's the direction board goes, they really know what their uh, options are and what it, what it means to the district. You know where the confusion was for me when I was reading through um, on our issue paper, agenda item 11.2, where it says topic, issue, and you scroll down to the bottom, and there's the administration's recommendation. The recommendation says approve referendum resolutions and has resolution one and resolution two, and they both state on a non-recurring basis. Right. So that's where the confusion was. And I leaned over to Cheryl and said they both say non-recurring. Thank you for asking the question. Yeah. So those are not captured in those 
small pullouts from the resolution documents, but if you read the full resolution documents. Right. Okay, so yeah. right. I'm the same as you are. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. So any questions, comments? <clears throat> this is part of our um, agenda, consensus agenda, okay. consent agenda later this evening as well. Okay. No questions, I guess. Then we will move move okay. on, unless you have Thank anything else to offer. Thank you. Okay, the Academy on the Prairie limited term EA position, Dr. Carlson. And I want to first thank those involved in this case, uh, and actually all three of these positions that I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, Julie Krakow has been involved with uh, in addition to some additional administrators. In this case, uh, things continually um, go well at the academy. Um, we, uh, as you can imagine, student needs continually change, and we are at a point that at least for the remainder of this school year, we feel that there is a need at this point to add uh, an educational assistant for seven hours a day uh, to assist at the academy. So this would be on the consent for the February 9th board meeting. Okay, questions at this point on that position before I move on to another one? Okay. Next, the early childhood educational assistant position, we're calling this an adjustment because we have, we had um, actually, um, and I know that Ms. Eitlin is here, I believe, so, so she may need to assist me, if, we'll see. But um, with this, we had actually come to the board some time ago, and the board had taken action on a one hour and a position and had to prove that. We have over time been unable to fill that. Uh, needs continue to grow and change as well. We've had uh, additional students uh, for sure to this program. And so over time, <coughs> now we've realized that uh, at least uh, for, the, for this year, we look at adding to a four hour position from a one hour. This is somewhat timely. And I, we try hard not to do this too often with the board. And, but this is a position where while we've been at this for some time trying to fill one hour, right now, even as we start this second semester of the school year already, it is a, a very timely need. So we are asking, I have gone ahead and placed this on the consent agenda. If the board is comfortable with approving it, tonight and I know it's just being presented at least the adjustment is being presented to you for the first time tonight questions are there any questions okay and then finally <clears throat> this is also uh, I'm doing it two times tonight in one meeting but this we're we're working with a to provide <clears throat> some needed assistance for a student at one of our schools and uh, trying to work with the family and do everything we can we help with the staff and family and as a result we have a plan that we have not finalized yet but part of a part of the plan potentially would be to add increased assistance by the way of an educational assistant for this student so I've taken the liberty of adding this tonight to the consent agenda for your consideration this is not necessarily a, um, even if you approve it, I will provide an update of how, we, how it ends up, but we are still working this week with a final plan. And so as I present this and ask for your approval, it would allow, it would give administration the flexibility to put this in place if, if determined to be in the best interest of the student. And so um, I can't share with you tonight that it will happen 
but uh, to do some timely action and support, uh, we are bringing that forward to, to you this evening. Questions on that? Hey, yes, Ms. Mrs. Mayor. Just a, a comment, and I'll make it very brief, is that I'm very proud of you and the rest of the administration that our first step is to help, that's your quote, to help the family. We have a child in need, and our first step is to help the family um, by providing an EA if needed, as opposed to a long list of things we could have done. So thank you for that, and please, uh, the rest of administration who had a part of that decision, um, I really appreciate that. It, it saves a kid. Thank you. I know members of the board that have, have seen, have, especially mid-year, this is not unusual. As needs change, we come to you. Uh, but please know that administratively, the principals and so on, they, they take a close examination of our current staffing and services before we get to this step. And so that is always our first attempt, and yet um, this is where we have ended up this evening. So. Um, two of the three we have put on for tonight, your consideration tonight, one would be put on at the next board meeting. Okay, okay. any questions? Thank you. Well, then we will move on to the consent agenda items. The board's been furnished with information. Oh, one more thing. Oh, uh, you're right. I'm so sorry. You oh, wave you hands, forget. I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you, Melissa, Crown Global Contract for Search Process. Thank you. Um, so last week I emailed the board some materials that pertain to the search and selection process for the district administrator. Um, the materials that I sent you were mainly the timeline, which focused on integrating a third party vendor into our search and selection process. Um, this um, third party vendor would be Crown Global. Um, we did present some information to the personnel and governance. I know Cheryl will get into that a little bit more, but I'd like to just focus some time on Crown Global and helping you to understand them a little bit more and why we went this route. So um, as a district, we have worked with associates of Crown Global for over 20 years, I believe. Um, they've provided us with finalist um, interviews, analysis, summary reports for both internal and external candidates for district administrator, principal, associate principal, and supervisory positions. In addition to their assistance with those administrative level positions, um, there are several administrators in the district that are trained to, do, to use the selection interview for teachers and support staff. And most recently, um, a few of us have also been trained in the principal selection interview, so just going one step beyond. Through these past 20 years, um, we have built a great relationship with the associates at Crown Global. They know us as a district, they know what our mission and vision are, um, and they know what's important to us as a district. Um, they understand the quality of the employees that we hire um, within those selection tools that we're using, and this familiarity with us puts them in a unique position to help us in this process. So they're going to focus not just on assisting us with the selection, as the timeline you received alluded to, they will gather information on us to match the candidate to us. This information will also serve as foundation for the new district administrator orientation and staff development. Um, so based upon this longstanding relationship that we as a district have forged with them, it only seems fitting that we would fully maximize um, the services that they offer and seek their guidance through this process as we move ahead. Um, they want our next district administrator to be as successful as we want that person to be. Um, therefore, we are recommending that we utilize Crown Global and their services um, to assist in our search and selection process. <coughs> And as Melissa said, it, um, this information was shared with the Personnel and Governance Committee, and um, they were supportive of this direction. You know, we, to really technically what we're doing is just expanding the role that Crown Global is using, that we're utilizing for them and wouldn't necessarily have to go through this process, but we wanted to be transparent and show what the, um, this um, additional responsibilities, what the, the cost, the expense of that is going to be. 
Um, the comments from two of the HR uh, people who are involved in our personnel and governance was that they felt that this was a really um, inexpensive uh, deal that we were getting. And I know sometimes in public education um, that, you know, 15000 I think is what the contract is, and that may seem like a lot, and it is, but there is no position more important than that district administrator. And they, they were quoting sums of almost three times mm -hmm. Um, what we're paying for this and that wasn't even for their top level person but you know leadership person um, certainly for some of their their work so I hope that as this comes forward I know we tried to give you the information it is on a very tight timeline um, tried to give you that information as soon as we had it and I appreciate mm -hmm. Melissa's work on this and Jay and I know that they are busy um, moving forward as we are as a district so questions Okay, thank, thank you. you. So then it is time to move on to the consent agenda. And as indicated, you've been furnished with background materials on each item, um, either this evening or at previous meetings. And we will, uh, they will be acted upon on one vote. The items below, we have 10 items this evening. And I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented, unless a board member would like to have one of the, the items pulled out. I would so move. I like to pull out the referendum. Okay, and we have done that without having to have a motion and that type of thing, Tom. So item number 12-7 will be pulled out. And so then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. I know, because Tom asked, the, her motion was to approve them as presented. Oh, okay. And so, Yes, and so our norm has been to allow a p one person to pull out an item. So I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented with the exclusion of item 12.7. So move. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, discussion on any of them? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> motion carries. Then item um, 12.7. I would entertain a motion to approve resolutions one and two for the April 7th, 2015 referendum as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. And then discussion. I'd like to have just read something to the yep. board, mm -hmm. that's okay? Yes. Um, this is based on me being the, the new guy in town too, so, um, but I felt it really imperative to, write, to read this to everybody. I have often referenced the steep learning curve associated with being a board member. I cannot count the number of times I have raised a concern or a question and finding out after the fact the details and reasoning behind actions or agendas were valid and in the best interest of the students and taxpayers. For the most part, but not always, I have been pl pleased with the efforts and the intentions. Um, some of the issues <coughs> I have raised in the past regarding the agenda Tim Mettinger had brought some things up, I could see his reasoning in principle. When I learned a referendum was on the table regarding technology, I knew I needed to learn more. I am more familiar with building science and maintenance. I am addressing, I know addressing issues sooner than later is always more profitable and using one of my favorite words, more proactive. We need to maintain safe and well functioning buildings and systems. Side note, caulk isn't the best way to fix your driveway. <laughs> uh, I do not have near the same comfort level with technology. Since I have little patience and personal time, I attempted to ascertain from as many teachers as quickly as possible what their thoughts were on technology. Since they will be the ones using it the most, I wondered how would they answer questions such as these? How will it streamline their professions? How will it allow more one-on-one -on -one time with students? What level of training or tutoring have they received to improve their learning curve and comfort level? I have taught classes. It is very unnerving to not have complete domain control in a classroom, especially if it involves an illogical, often undependable computer. Since teachers are our greatest marketing asset, they definitely touch the most number of people. How or what would they say to convince a voter on the fence in the grocery store to vote yes? What would they say to turn the voters' heads, to turn a voters' heads? What 
what are their plans five, 10, 20 years out? What are their plans and hopes? I honestly don't know if they could credibly answer any of these questions, but I am the new guy. But that excuse becomes less valid every board meeting. In circumventing normal means of communication, I apparently and understandably made some teachers uncomfortable. I had not spoken with any teachers on technology as of this date, besides Jan Wee, who is exceptional. <laughs> At this point, I have little background on improving a technology referendum question other than what I have been told in board meetings or from the leadership of the district. The business side of me tells me at this time I do not have enough information to honestly, credibly approve a technology referendum question. I am a representative of the taxpayers of the home community. The board is bound to be a responsible party to the community and the resources. I have met several educators who impressed me with their dedication, their drive, and their problem-solving skills. <coughs> Because I believe in this group, I will approve these referendum questions as good for the voters and the students. I am not convinced this district is near as proactive as it needs to be yet. As my time progresses, I will expect more relevant data and more real-time details. I am also partly to blame for my lack of forethought in regards to Holman's future. I believe in this district. We have to expect more and do a better job. Very truly yours. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Tim. I'd just like to make a couple comments here as well. And, um, um, you know, this has is, is kind of been a, a difficult process, and I want to thank administration for providing us with a lot of the detail here uh, this evening. Um, it, it might only be me seeing some irony in this process. Um, at the last board meeting, there was discussion around AB1, which, by the way, I think is a very bad bill. But there was some discussion around the quickness of which it was moving, um, the, the quickness of the uh, public hearing uh, and how it was moving too fast. However, just a few weeks ago, um, we had a, a vote to increase our spending per pupil where that information was given to us basically just that morning um, with little time to review prior to the meeting. And I guess my concern more was with the process, not the actual act itself. Uh, there's also some irony in that some of the information we've most recently received is ultimately what's helped me make my decision and how to uh, take a vote to advance this evening. As reading from the resolution, it says, as uh, the school board, uh, school district of Holman determined that it is in the best interest of students to implement one-to-one -one wireless mobile technology at the Holman School. It's in the first sentence. I certainly agree with that. And those who have watched this board for a while know I have not been an advocate of the bring your own device technology uh, and certainly believe in that. And as a member of the Buildings and Grounds Committee, I certainly support the need to invest in our buildings um, as well. And it appears that in reviewing some of this most recent information, uh, that it looks like this advancement to a referendum probably would have been a, a necessary step uh, and therefore I will be voting yes in supporting the uh, uh, resolution uh, put forth in front of us this evening. Thank you Mr. Manninger. Anyone else who wishes to address the board? Okay then there is a motion let me just find my this right there is a motion to approve resolutions one and two for the April 7th 2015 referendum as presented all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion carries then moving on to um, board members reports and discussion <clears throat> call on members of the board to report any committee um, re comments or reports that they have Lisa Collins um, we did not have a finance committee last week, but attended the WASB um, conference in Milwaukee this past week. Some of you, and it was it was a really great conference. And um, I think talking about <coughs> some of the workshops that I went to, you know, there was addressing referendum and how to speak to the public um, about these big, um, what seems to be big to get items, but how to relay how important it is. People because they're not the common folks don't have you know all the experience as far as hearing all the details um, and the nuts and bolts of behind the scenes what goes on at the district and so I I really appreciate that like I had asked Jay Clark a few times to say something maybe in a little bit <coughs> less complex way um, and I think that if we can you know let our community know more about how um, a lot of this is really kind of common sense building blocks things 
um, without making it seem too wordy, I, I would suspect that the majority of the folks in the community would be, you know, in su support with, for what we're asking for. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunlap. I'd like to just ask the public to continue to support the, the band uniform drive that's going on. Uh, it seems like it's going in the right direction. And, and you heard me say it before, I just love that band. If you get a chance to go listen to them at, at, at a basketball game or anything, go listen to them because they are indeed super. And then I'd also like to put, put a personal request out to the high school basketball team. To, could they please not have these games so darn tight? I, <laughs> <laughs> we had an overtime game and a two-point game and a double overtime game all in a row. <coughs> I'm an old man, okay? <coughs> That's tough. It's fun to watch them win. It's been a real exciting season. I hope they can keep it up. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cruz. Yeah, um, yeah. I intended the WASB conference, too. It was very uh, overloading. Um, <laughs> it was very good. Kate was very nice to uh, take me under her wing and guide me through the uh, maze of, of uh, name tags and all that kind of thing. Um, and it was what I found, it was very uh, to learn from different districts. And I've got some business cards and done a little networking with them. It was a lot of fun. Especially it was nice getting to know my peers on the board here a little bit better. I've had some really nice conversations and real <coughs> quality time. The only downside was my shins are so <coughs> sore from running to, to the cigar bar, but I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> it's my fault. Yeah. Okay, Alex. Nothing Any to share. Comments? Okay. Uh, Nita. Uh, okay, I, I, they were walking back with us after dinner and they detoured and got lost and apparently that's where they went. So um, <laughs> anyhow, I attended the WASB convention also. Um, it's such a worthwhile three days, three and a half days. Um, my goal before I'm off the board in a few years is for our entire board to get down there because it's like the Grand Canyon. You can talk about it and talk about it, but once you're there, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so, I never knew this existed. I never knew we could find out information on this and on this. And you listen to speakers that make you just want to come back here and, and shake everybody up. And it, it's inspirational. It's, it's gut-wrenching. It's, you know, you cry because you realize what's happening at the state level with the legislature and what they would like to do with education, but you realize the power that you have if you all come together and the things that you can do if you you know your heart's in the right place and what you want to do for education and for kids and why you got elected and um, it's a wonderful opportunity and it's your responsibility as a school board member to fulfill that by um, by learning and and serving your community and serving the kids that rely on you so um, it's just a great opportunity and I actually ran into my old high school vice principal there who by some miracle of science is still a superintendent in an unnamed <laughs> district <laughs> and he gave uh, he gave a conference on um, adult bullying which was phenomenal um, and he did not recognize me which is a blessing <laughs> he didn't even remember me which was really nice um, and um, there was also a, a presenter named Kevin Honeycutt, and we all, he was one of the main speakers. We all went and, and listened to him. I don't know if, if Jan might know who he is. He's very, look at, she's nodding. He oh. is such a techie, and he is so ADHD and bouncing off the walls, and he admits it. I mean, an hour and a half of listening to him felt like five minutes. You wanted, I, I was I was wishing I had my iPad in front of me so I could pull up his website, which I did when I got back to my room, but kevinhoneycutt.org. He said, just Facebook friend me or go on my web page. And, and I have, he said, I have 36,000 Twitter contacts. So if I want to know how to get a free app for a kid to do this, I ask one of my Twitter friends and I get 36,000 answers. So go on my, go on my um, kevinhoneycutt.org. And he literally does have, he has, thousands of free apps for education for kids. So I want to get that information out to every teacher I know, kevinhoneycutt.org and he doesn't he does so many things for free for education all over the all over the world. He's just a fascinating man. Um, boy, I don't know what else I can say. I guess I will probably get my notes organized and report a little bit more at the at the next meeting, but very worthwhile um, 
time spent at that convention and I thank my colleagues for putting up with me for those few days oh thank you <laughs> well thank you Kate Mayer yeah because Anita's so hard to put up with yeah you're well you're welcome Anita we put up with you really well I'm not going to repeat anything that anyone said about WASB um, I'll just add a note that I'm grateful for um, taxpayers ultimately pay for their board members to go to this that's part of our budget and it's not cheap to put us up um, and I hope that from what you've heard tonight you see that we learn something we become informed and an informed board member um, is a good board member it helps us make better votes for our people um, I was reading all the happenings around from all of our schools I do that every week I don't always comment on them I'm going to do this really fast because mm -hmm. it could take a long time but I know that we're in a point right now when our teachers are testing our kids we've it's the aims and maps it's everything else report cards are coming due or they already have gone out just an appreciation for all that means um, what our teachers do and what our what our kids go through to take those tests um, a text of just building on what you were saying I, I was thinking of you Jan because you're like our guru with tech stuff and I saw that um, early childhood 4k um, some of the teachers are, are like excited about possibly a smart table and I've seen a couple of those and that's like like wow <laughs> you know if you get a smart table please invite me I want to come watch the kids use it if that's a possibility thanks for checking that stuff out I really support that um, Viking stock market challenge and the kids that that placed first and second in this competition that's huge I don't want to take a lot of time about it but I read it and I'm like oh my gosh they had a hundred thousand dollars and you had a team that placed first yeah you're nodding right mm -hmm. that's big I want to hire them for me <laughs> I have some questions um, and also Beauty and the Beast this is from the arts this um, professional opera company is coming they're costuming like 12 of our kids that have small parts and then the choir is gonna sing with this company Jeez, our district is phenomenal <laughs> that's just very cool thank you for posting that on there um, middle school quiz bowl um, <laughs> the kids did great right um, absolutely great and I loved your quote total quiz bowl domination by Holman Middle School that was <laughs> I like I like that one <laughs> thanks to the teachers who are in charge of that and thanks for your quote that was the, awesome the um, high school quiz bowl um, they found out two days ago they qualified for nationals excellent so we're gonna be harassing the booster club for funding I think we should soon. I mean there's just so much and and I know this takes a lot of time but you know for those who do listen we, we really are a good district the stuff we do is really good and finally one uh, high school I read yours too um, DECA placed really well as they always do and then our AP teachers made it onto the honor roll on the college board the second time in four years these are huge things that I want our public to know because that doesn't happen in every district so every principal please take that message back to your teachers I'm appreciative of that I'm appreciative of everything that we do that brings such uh, unique opportunities to our kids um, it's beautiful wonderful thank you that's it <laughs> thank you Kate and thanks for sharing that I know there's a lot of work that goes into those updates and it's nice to have you pull out a few things from them um, and then mr. Menninger you know, one of the challenges with going near the end is that so many good things have already been said already. Um, <laughs> but I um, certainly want to echo the happenings and thank you uh, for writing those. Those are just a treasure to, to read. And um, certainly want to echo some comments uh, Gary has made as well and uh, encourage everybody. There are great things happening in the gym and on the rink with Holman Sports. So continue to get out there and uh, cheer on the Holman Vikings. Okay, thank you. And I just want to say thank you to the board um, for being so thoughtful about the process or about the decision that we made earlier this evening regarding the referendum. We've been hearing for many months about the needs in the district. And while it may not have come in the form of we have these needs, we probably need to go for a referendum in order to um, 
find funding for them. We we have been aware of those needs as a board, and it has been many months. And in early November or in November and December to make those decisions, um, it reminds me of a time when we talk about is it good for the students? Then let's make it happen. And I feel like that's what's happened these last couple months. So I do thank you, and I know that even if there are some concerns, we have some time now to answer some of those questions and to get the word out to the community and to really educate the community on what the needs are. Um, I believe firmly that this is good for our students and it's good for our school district. So I do thank you um, for taking the step, even though maybe trepidly. I would note that in your folder there was a superintendent evaluation form from the school district of Menominee Falls and I asked for that to be included because that is one of the sessions I went to. It was actually about continuous improvement which we are utilizing and working on as a school district. We have a firm um, belief in continuous improvement. I, this is something that we've been working on as there is the educator effectiveness. There is currently no model for superintendent or district administrator um, evaluations as there are for our educators and our principals and building principals. But they have, Menominee Falls has done a, a wonderful job with the six sigma steps of continuous improvement and they talked about their pillars of belief and it's so similar to what we talk about as a district. So I would just, I gave, the, I asked for this to be copied for you so that you could take a look at it. Um, you know, quality student achievement is their number one. People, service, finance, those sorts of things then are also pillars of their beliefs. Um, and it worked its way from the bottom up. Their committees, very similar to what we do, their committees met and discussed what should those goals be of the, the district administrator and the, the school district as a whole. And so the committees come and bring those to the school board and then they finalize this. They, told, they said this is like the 13th model, so it takes a lot of time to do this. Um, but it, I thought it was so very timely. I would encourage you to go to the Menominee Falls website because their presentation and a lot of their other information was on, is on their um, website under district and the board. So just wanted to share that. That was um, very meaningful and a great, very timely um, breakout session that I attended. And as the others, I do thank the district for allowing me to go to that because as a, as a school district that believes in, believes in lifelong learning, that's an opportunity for us to do so. So that's all I have. Any, anything else to add? Then we will move on to um, you've received committee reports, written reports from Student Achievement and Learning, Building and Grounds, and Personnel and Governance. Uh, board meeting schedule February 9th we have a regular board meeting the 17th is the board workshop with Matthew fail at 6 o'clock and the 23rd is another regular board meeting the policy for review comes from the salt committee it's the title one parent involvement so Kate anything on that um, policy that you're looking to make major changes or just no. looking for input okay yep. Okay, then more board meeting reflection. Any comments or thoughts about tonight? Um, it was uh, pleasant. I enjoyed it. Good meeting, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Good. Well, then, having said that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. I think I put another. That's too, oh, that's good. And it is fine.